Hello everyone, and if you're seeing this, it means that I have got the game fixed. As in, we've removed all the errors from missing mods, and my system is up and running. We do have it up and running indeed. Now what we're going to do is, just found a train on the edge of the map here, at the Erlen portal. And we're going to take a ride along. going to hit that play button. We're going to get it going. Just like that. Now I'm going to keep an eye on the FPS. Um, it's running 26 FPS at the moment, which... Essentially, we've just got a bunch of trees here, so that's nothing to really worry about. So, we'll just see how the FPS goes when we get into the built-up area. That's where I'm interested in. But anyway, a bit about my new system. It's been coming for a while. I wanted to do it, and I finally got it done. And what we have is an AMD Ryzen 2700. Now, um, initially I was looking at a 1700X and Slim Gaming rightfully pointed out that's a couple of generations old now. And I could have gone for a 3000 series but the price really wasn't sort of in the budget I had to do for now so I went for the 2700 processor one second and I'll just get a look at it so it is a Ryzen 7 it's 8 core 16 thread got 3.2 gigahertz base with a 4.1 gigahertz max boost and Unlike my old APU system, it does require a standalone graphics card. I am still running my RX 480 with it. Now that's one thing that hasn't changed. Another thing that has changed though, is we've gone from 8 gig of DDR3 up to 32 gig of DDR4. For that I've gone for Corsair's Vengeance LPX RAM, running 3000 megahertz, so quite a big jump up there. Um, I did get questioned on why have I gone for 32, and that seemed to not question to be honest, uh, in the games I'm playing I do video rendering of course for YouTube and 32 seems like the minimum any serious gamer should be looking at putting in their systems now. The argument could be made well you're only running an RX 480 graphics card you're only running a 2700 Ryzen chip but you know I wanted the 32 gig, I went for the 32 gig. Now, these things are all great, but you need a motherboard to go on. And the one I've gone for is the ASUS Tough Gaming B450 board. It has RGB. I'm not a big fan of RGB. If anyone knows me, they'll know that. But it's got it, and basically what I've done is I've set it up as a temperature sensor and monitor. There is a smart option, and basically what you can do is just set it. So it starts off green when it's cool. When you get to 40 degrees on the system, it will go yellow. If I ever push it too hard and it gets up to 70 degrees it will go red now 
hopefully I'll never see that but if I do that's an instant warning okay stop what you're doing let's get this system cooled down so RGB has its uses I'll give it that and the last component I've installed for now is a new power supply because of course there's no point having all this stuff if you're going to run your old I want to say it's six, seven years old. My old power supply, in fact. Um, the power supply I had in my previous system when I built it, that died. And as a temporary fix, I grabbed my previous power supply, which was 600 watt power supply. Totally overboard for what I had at the time. But hey, it sounded good. And... This was when I didn't really understand all that much about building PCs and someone managed to talk me into getting a 600 watt. So I used that and it was only a stopgap but it stayed in my system for about three years so that's gone now and in its place we have a Be Quiet Pure Power 11. Um, I was looking at getting a modular or semi-modular power supply from Be Quiet. Um, kind of debating still whether I should have gone down that route. But this is 80 gold rated and was at a price point that I could afford to get this time. So I sacrificed the modular cable for reliability and quality on the power supply Oh, going back to a game that's not a pretty bridge we will have to fix that so yeah that's what I'm running guys um, I've stuck with 600 watt because I'm not going to be going multi GPU setup I'm not going to be running water cooling or 200,000 fans um, I will be getting a different case this payday. Um, I've stuffed everything into my current case at the minute. Which is a bit snug. It is a mid-tower. But it was a bargain basement. I think £18 case. Um, cable management is nearly non-existent on it it's not a pretty build so I won't be showing the build off on this one but I am going to get another case with provision for more fans I am going to be fitting be quiet fans to it again for the quality and B for the noise reduction um, one of the fans I have on this system is rather loud so I'll be glad to get rid of that when I can. So um, going back to the game, we're sitting around the sort of mid 30s on FPS, 40 FPS right now. Though of course we are sitting at the station, we are looking to the side, and well, we're in the middle of nowhere basically. But there's nothing to kind of cause any issues. The 31 FPS as we pull away there. It's tottering between 31 and 33 which of course is way more than what we're used to on this map with my old system which is exactly why I've gone for the upgrade. Again I'm looking to see what it's going to be when we start getting into built up areas which is coming up ahead as we can see that's going to be the big thing um, as far as the PC build goes it's not finished yet um, I could have waited and done it all in one go um, a couple of things one I got impatient two um, 
my friend's health issues. It's called it's me to look at things and go, you know what? You can't just keep putting things off forever. Yes, I could have maybe got a bit better system. On one hand, on the other hand, if I'd waited until this payday, no, I wouldn't have got anything better than what I have now. I'd have just brought it all in one go instead of in two parts. Which, to be fair, everything I'm going to buy on this payday, i.e. my case and the fans, um, better hard drives, none of the new stuff needs that to work. I'm still using the same hard drives at the moment. That works fine. Still using the same case. That works fine. I guess the argument could be, well, why are you bothering to upgrade that stuff? Well, the obvious thing is hard drive space. When you're making videos, you can never have enough hard drive space. And to be fair, a one terabyte hard drive and 256 meg SSD is not enough. Oh. We've got an R, yeah. So we've got a new Terrier there. We'll have a look at that in the next video. We'll find somewhere to use that. But here we are. Coming into the container ports here at Bradford. We're still running 22 FPS. Okay, we're not going to set the world alight. And the tracks are popping up ahead of us. But I think you get that in pretty much everyone's video. I'll have to double check that, but I think that is a thing. Um, I could probably change some settings to stop them flickering roofs on the buildings, though. But yeah, 20 FPS, 22, 21. So that's certainly much better than we're used to dip into 19 at its lowest here. Yeah, I'm much happier. Hopefully you guys are too. Hopefully you're enjoying this more. Because we would be well into single digits now. 16 FPS. Spinning it around. That's doing no difference. Oh, 15 we managed to get it dropped to there. And that was briefly for a second. No, I don't think we've even had a train ride out here since I built all this. But yeah, that's certainly running much better. Ugh. Next big thing will be when we get up towards Manchester Piccadilly, see what happens there, but hopefully we're going to see a similar kind of performance. Probably can't tell, I'm not quite reserved, but inside I am delighted with this improved performance, I have to say. I expected it to be better. Part of me was dreading that it wouldn't be. But it really is. Which brings me on to other things. Time permitting, I am going to bring back Railroad Corporation. They've just released a, another update. Nothing new per se more just some fixes optimization that kind of thing but they're still updating it I was going to have a look at the larger free play map so that's something I'm looking at see how that handles the bigger better system one thing I have been putting off till now because the system quite simply couldn't handle recording and playing and that is Train Sim World 
if people are interested in seeing some videos from me on Train Sim World, then let me know because that's something I would like to bring if people are interested in it. If not, I'm just going to enjoy the game on my own. And also, I will be doing a one off video in a few weeks, probably two or three videos I may be able to stretch it out um, on a game called Satisfactory now a few of you might be familiar with that if you have watched Slim Gaming's channel you'll certainly know what it is for those that don't it's it's basically a production build line building game fully 3D it's not sort of your isometric looking down view type game. It is a full 3D environment. You go around, harvest your raw materials, create stuff, build production lines with conveyor belts and refineries and your mining facilities, all that kind of stuff. And the reason I'm thinking of doing that is they do have trains on it. I haven't unlocked it yet. I'm going to carry on playing through until I do. But I'm looking at doing a couple of episodes just for something different. To show off the trains in that game. Needless to say, it's set on a different world. The whole premise of the game is you land on a new world and you're setting it up for colonization and all that good stuff so the trains are not going to be what you'd expect to see around here I'm not going to spoil the surprise too much but yeah it, like, as I say it's going to be something a bit different something a bit fun hopefully that you guys all like Yeah, just a note on FPS. Spinning it round, I can get it to drop to 13 FPS. Whereas before, that would have just crashed out to 1 FPS, maybe 2 if we were lucky. Yeah, definitely looking good. Need to come and tidy these bits up. There's so much on the scenery side we haven't finished up and we really need to, or I need to, to be more precise. That's not looking great, that road there. We've got some rampage going on. Got a bush growing through. That's certainly got to be fixed. Oh, sorry if you heard that in the background. That's just something falling down. Alright, so on the approaches, we are 16 FPS coming into Manchester Piccadilly. But that's way better than I could have possibly hoped for so anyway guys that's going to be it for this video it's not a full episode not going to do any building I just wanted to show you guys basically what the new system is capable of hopefully you'll agree it was a worthwhile investment a little note on that. Oh, we've got to delete that road. Um, yeah, a little note on price. £465 it cost. And I've got to give a shout out to CCL Computers. Because by their own estimate, this... Part shouldn't have even have arrived 
until yesterday at the earliest. And I had them on Tuesday. So, from ordering on the Friday, free delivery option I went for on my ad. Not sure how that bush got to be there. But yeah, free delivery and within three working days I've got a system to play with. I can't say any better than that. Full marks to CCL computers for the rapid turnaround. So if you are after any new parts, just go have a look, check them out. Let's get rid of that bush. Yeah, anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I'm looking to be back next week with a full episode. And as I say, just let me know if you'd be interested in seeing other stuff like Train Sim World, like the Satisfactory video, or anything else, really. I mean, we can go back and cover some machine key or other things. Now I know what's happening with my friend, kind of treatment schedule and stuff like that. I can look at getting the odd extra video in as and when around that. So, with that said, I'm going to call this one done. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.